It's a rainy evening outside and I've got my railway track with a goods train waiting for a locomotive here. Um, you can hear the central heating boiler rumbling in the background there. I've got a track all the way around my basement, as you can see. There's the goods train. It's just waiting for a locomotive to pull it. So, let's go into the workshop. And uh, the bench is relatively clear. It's got uh, dear old Blanche there. So let's get her into steam. This is a uh, Hobby King controller. Same as the Radio Link controller, about the same price too that I've used on Russell. Let's load the batteries in. Get them all in the right way around. I always take the batteries out when I'm not using these things so the batteries don't run down when they don't leak. Batteries in. Cover on. Switch it on. Got power. Right, let's get this steam engine turned on. Make sure all the servos are working properly. Now, my servo switch is a bit secretive. Right in the corner here, underneath the whistle. Servo should be turned on. Turn this servo on. Let's give it a try. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's the throttle. You can see it moving out through the cab window. This here. You can see the reversing handle there. Little servo motors on the floor there. The radio frequency on the remote control is making a noise on the microphone. It's working, it's working good. And then finally, the whistle servo motor, which you can see here. That operates the whistle here. There's a little whistle valve there, and that's you can see it there. It's good, it's all good. Put it back on the stands so we know that's all working. I'm going to turn the various radio control devices off and should have really turned, should always really turn your engine off first. So they say, but it's not always possible. There we go. The engine's turned off. And I'll just show you in here, I'll show you just how crowded the cab is. This is the um, safety valve uh, piping. Lift the cab roof. And you can make it out inside there. I'll take the camera off the tripod. Make out just how tight everything is inside there. That's the gas tank. This is the gas control valve. This is the um, throttle here. That's the bypass there for the water pump. This is here. Yeah, you can still see it best over here. This is the radio receiver. I've stuck the aerial along the underneath of the door there, you can see it there, that uh, orange thing. Um, see the pressure cage there. And then, around this side, the water gauge right here, telling me how much water is in the boiler. And then here is the displacement lubricator. That's the top of the displacement lubricator. And that's the drain for the, for the displacement lubricator. Um, the blowdown for the uh, uh, for the water gauge is right here. Okay, you can see the water gauge really much clearer now. I've got the light round this side. The batteries are there in the roof of the cab. Had a little cab fire, burned a bit of the shrink wrap off it. I had a leaking um, a gas control valve here when I first started up. Caught fire and burnt that off there. It's happened to me before on another engine. So for oiling the locomotive, I get the thickest oil I can, which is this. It's um, 80W90, it's gearbox oil. I buy it uh, from my local box store. 
And then I add a little bit of rapeseed oil, which I um, was recommended by a guy on YouTube. And um, it's apparently a long string molecule and it just helps the oil stick and bind uh, and not be thrown off the bearings because in steam engines oil gets thrown around quite a bit. And I add a little bit of this to it. But I used to use um, I used to use sewing machine oil and these thin oils, which uh, a lot of guys recommend, and I found that the parts wore out much more quickly. So I've stopped using those. Okay, let's turn the engine around. Give it a little bit of an oil. I have recently oiled this, so it's not such a big deal. Um, I don't use this oil for the cylinders. I only use it for lubricating all the other bits. A little bit of paper tissue all helps. Every single pin and bearing requires some oil. Slide bars require oil. Don't leave anything un unoiled. As I go underneath this engine, I've got all the Stevenson's valve gear to get on with. Make sure all the eccentrics, eccentric sleeves are oiled. Especially the crank pins are oiled. Axle boxes are oiled. Expansion links are all oiled, all those pins. This is the um, water pump. Make sure the eccentric sleeve, the knuckle joint there, these knuckle joints here. This is all oiled, oiled, oiled. Always do a thorough oil between every run. At the end of each trip, I, I drain the displacement lubricator here because it comes out more easily when the engine's hot. And I've, I've I, so you drain it here, drain the water off, and then I add new oil from the top there until it's full. <coughs> that's already been done. So I do that at the end of each trip, so that's ready to go. Now I need to put water in the boiler with my trusty squeezy bottle and I'm going to do that through the non-return valve here or the ENOT valve it's sometimes called and I'm going to watch deep inside the cab I'm going to watch the, the water gauge come up so let's go around there and you can see the water come up here it's about there now Just jumped up a bit, might have seen that. Oh, there we go. I think that's enough. So the next bit is to fill the saddle tank with water. My handrail's a bit loose there. Try not to lose that. So this tank feeds the axle pump and it has a return on it. And I'll show you that once I get the thing running. I'm using distilled water, I get it from the supermarket. I don't use rainwater. So that's now almost full. Put that back on. Now, because I get a little drip out of the water fill valve there, I'm going to just leave this plugged in. That drip will go once the, um, the engine's in steam and the clacks are sat down properly. The clacks are the uh, neoprene ball type clacks, so they tend to float in the water until there's some pressure on them, which is okay. Next is uh, filling it with gas. And what I did here, I made a hole in the top so that I can connect down, or I hope I can. Down into the gas tank through the Ronson valve. That's good. It's just only mixture of um, butane propane mix. Uh, people say you shouldn't use this. Pure, pro pure butane is pretty difficult to get hold of and it also is quite expensive. So I tend to go with this stuff. It works fine as far as I'm concerned. It's something to do with the pressure in the um, uh, the gas reservoir tends to be a bit higher, but I test my gas reservoirs up to about three or four hundred pounds per square inch, so I have no fear there. Of it exploding, 
but do check with your engine manufacturer before using this mixture. Good. Wait for the gas to clear a little bit. And the next bit, we've got a full boiler. Now for the most frightening part of any small steam engine operation, lighting the gas. That wasn't too bad. Didn't bang too too loudly. Must remember to put my little safety valve piping on. Oops, got out. Got out. Still got it. Yep. Tends to, uh, once the gas starts flowing, I guess it's to do with temperature variations as the gas changes from liquid to gas. It cools down and causes the O-rings to uh, expand and whatever, or contract. So we're up to pressure. We're blowing off at 50 pounds per square inch. Let's uh, push it into forward. I'll put it in the forward gear first. There we go, full forward gear. Slowly open the throttle. Warm up the cylinders a little bit. In part two, we get obliged to pull her train. Whistle. 